in this video we will talk about the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease also called as the COPD the COPD includes disease that produce the airway obstruction in the lungs and uh, this is a preventable treatable and slowly progressive disease the COPD progresses slowly and causes increased airflow obstruction involving the airways the pulmonary parenchyma or the both the pulmonary parenchyma includes any form of the lung tissue and uh, includes the bronchi bronchioles blood vessels interstitium and the alveoli in COPD the obstruction can be reversed to a certain extent but uh, it is not fully reversible the COPD includes the emphysema and the chronic bronchitis in emphysema there is destruction and damage of the gas exchanging surface of the lungs called the alveoli and uh, there is distension of the air spaces beyond the terminal bronchioles and the destruction of alveolar walls which leads to the decreased gases exchange between the lungs and the blood and in chronic bronchitis there is chronic inflammation of the lower airways and uh, there is excessive mucus production cough and the labored breathing or the dyspnea the chronic bronchitis is defined as the presence of cough and sputum for at least three months in each of the two consecutive years the risk factors exposure to the tobacco smoke this is the most important and the major risk factor of copd the others include the secondhand smoke increasing age occupational exposure to the chemicals or the dust indoor and outdoor environmental pollution genetics the deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin enzyme puts the person at great risk of uh, getting the copd the alpha 1 antitrypsin enzyme is responsible for protecting the lung parenchyma the pathophysiology first due to the risk factors like the smoking occupational expo exposure and the inflammation this leads to the increased oxidative stress and the inflammatory mediators in the lungs which causes the fibrosis and thickening of the bronchial walls leading to the narrowing of the airway and this leads to the airway obstruction causing chronic bronchitis also there is decreased repair of the alveoli and increased destruction of the alveolar walls and capillaries and uh, this leads to the decreased elastic recoil of the lungs and uh, causes enlarged air spaces also there is loss of alveolar attachment causing air trapping on expiration and this uh, all these leads to the emphysema the number of goblet cells which produce the mucus increases and there is also enlargement of the submucosal glands in the airways this causes the mucus hypersecretion and the ciliary dysfunction the excess mucus is produced and the cilia present in the airways do not function properly and this leads to the pooling of the sputum and uh, th and this can contribute to the occurrence of uh, chronic lung infections clinical manifestations there are three primary and major clinical manifestations of copd these include the chronic cough dyspnea or the difficulty in breathing and the sputum production the others include the weight loss because of the dyspnea which uh, interferes with the person's eating pattern there is also barrel chest in which the anterior posterior uh, diameter of the chest increases giving it a barrel shape and the gradual employment of accessory muscles because when the person feels increasingly difficult to, to breathe there is the employment of the accessory muscles to aid in the breathing there are four grades of copd in stage one which is the mild form the ratio of forced expiratory volume in one second to the forced vital capacity is less than 70 percent and the forced expiratory volume in one second also called as the fev1 is equal to or greater than 80 percent in stage two the moderate type the ratio remains the same and the forced expiratory volume in one second decreases to 50 to 80 percent in stage 3 which is the severe form of copd the forced expiratory volume in one second decreases further to 30 to 49 percent in stage 4 which is the very severe form of copd the forced expiratory volume in one second decreases to less than 30 percent now how can we diagnose the copd first we take the history from the patient including the signs and symptoms the risk factors the family history and the elevating factors the exacerbating factors 
Next, we can use the spirometry to determine the ratio of FEV1 to FVC. We can also use the arterial blood gas analysis to determine the level of oxygen in the blood. Screening for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Complications of COPD include the respiratory insufficiency and failure, pneumonia, chronic atelectasis, pneumothorax, and the pulmonary artery hypertension. Now, how can we manage a patient with COPD? There are uh, at least two approaches in medical management of COPD. The first is the risk reduction. And this is used for patients who are stable with COPD. And uh, this focus on the smoking cessation. To help the patient to uh, stop smoking, nicotine replacement can be employed like the nicotine patches or the nicotine gums. Next is the pharmacologic therapy. This includes the administration of medications. In grade 1, the short-acting bronchodilators are used. Bronchodilators are the medications which uh, dilate the uh, inflamed and constricted airways and uh, help the person to breathe normally. In grade 2 or grade 3, the short-acting bronchodilators with one or more long-acting bronchodilators are used. And in grade 3 or grade 4, the regular treatment with one or more bronchodilators uh, is employed and the inhaled corticosteroids are used for the increased uh, COPD uh, exacerbations. The other medications include the supplemental oxygen when the level of oxygen in the patient's blood decreases significantly, alpha-1 antitrypsin augmentation in the persons who are deficient of alpha-1 antitrypsin enzyme, antibiotics for repeated infections, antidepressives for the coughing, narcotics, and vaccines. The vaccines like the influenza vaccines can be used to control the repeated episodes of lung infections which decrease the exacerbation of the COPD. Now the surgical management. The surgical management includes the bullectomy which is the surgical excision of the bullet. The bullet are the enlarged air spaces in the thorax which do not contribute to the ventilation but only occupy the space. The next is the lung volume reduction surgery. This is used in the patients who, in which the disease is localized to, a, to certain parts of the lungs and this involves the removal of the portion of a diseased lung parenchyma so that the healthy uh, lung can expand and uh, function uh, properly. The next is the lung transplant which is the definitive surgical treatment of severe COPD for the selected patients only. Nursing management. Assess the patient's lung sounds to monitor the patient's uh, progress or the deterioration of the condition. Encourage fluid intake to help thin up the secretions and the sputum in the lungs. Employ chest physiotherapy to remove the sputum from the congested lung areas. Teach the patient about diaphragmatic and persistently breathing because these exercises help the patient's lungs to strengthen and to function properly. Pacing activities. It is common for a COPD patient to experience fatigue and dyspnea when performing activities. So it is highly recommended to pace the activities and uh, in order to decrease the dyspnea and uh, fatigue. Monitor for potential complications. And finally, administer the prescribed medications as ordered. Thank you. That was all about the COPD.